Hey YouTube, it's Prep for Life. I have got a really cool video to share with you. Um, it, for those of you that have seen the suppressor video that I did on the hybrid, I'm also putting together a project for a short barrel rifle or an SBR. Um, for that, I mean, I've built several AR-15s. Um, uh, they're, they're a really fun project. They're really customizable. They do a lot of stuff. Um, I wanted something a little bit, you know, higher up this time. I wanted something a little bit more reliable, kind of a just a a better made rifle this time around so I actually looked to the guys uh, up in Idaho from primary weapon system or PWS so some of you guys may be familiar with the PWS I've been really impressed the first time I really started looking at PWS uh, I did a four-day rifle class down at front site and was just impressed one of my friends that came down was actually running a one of their 14 and a half inch barreled uh, AR-15s with a pin welded muzzle device so overall it met the 16 inch barrel criteria so it was legal he didn't have to register as a short barrel rifle but that thing ran it, I mean first of all it was so lightweight compared to everybody else's rifle it ran flawlessly the entire four days he didn't even need to clean it I believe um, he did end up cleaning it just at the end um, before the test but it, it was just amazing so for this project I, again I wanted to build a short barrel rifle they make a really cool 7 inch model uh, the original version was called the Diablo just beautiful but I know for for primary weapons as well as for silencer co they don't recommend sticking a suppressor on anything shorter than about 10 inches uh, if you're shooting in 5.56 so what I'm looking at what I, what I bought was the MK110 or Mark 110. Uh, what I found here was a an upper uh, that I picked up used from somebody local. Now you'll notice this is a piston driven model um, and PWS does theirs even a little bit more differently. For one this is a coated um, bolt carrier so a lot like the nickel boron it's got a special plating that's really gonna you know serve you well uh, for cleaning and things like that. There's their symbol right there. Um, but they've designed their piston system to be a lot like the AK-47. Now in this this newer version there's actually a removable piece so I can take the charging handle off and kind of show you this a little bit better. So you'll notice I mean that piston goes all the way down the length. Um, what that does for you, now again I'm talking about unsuppressed shooting here, what that does is it it leaves a lot of the fouling outside of the chamber here which means you're not going to get a lot of the carbon buildup, a lot of the fouling that you normally would in a direct gas impingement, impingement model where um, you know the bullet discharges, it sends the gas all the way down the gas tube and then pushes the, the gas key back and cycles the round. There's a little bit of mill work here, you know, just around the bolt carrier itself. Any way that they can shave weight, make it a reliable rifle but also shave weight off the entire thing um, is key couple of mods that I've made already is uh, as you can see I've already put a BCM gunfighter on um, the reason I'm, I'm shying away from some of the Magpul furniture is that this rail it is a key mod rail and Magpul has obviously been moving to their own M-Lock uh, furniture so it's, it's a little bit incompatible but um, I really like this foregrip now you know some people like gripping it like this and just kind of running it like that um, I'm a big fan of the thumb brake method, so for me, this kind of sweep back, uh, you know, direction, it has just a gentle sweep backward, and it gives me a really good grip as I'm holding that. I put it as far forward as possible uh, so that I can get just total control over the barrel of that rifle as I'm shooting. Um, you'll also notice I put on one of the Silencer Co. muzzle devices here. I'm still not convinced that's the way I'm going to leave it. I think it looks cool but obviously it generates less muzzle recoil, uh, muzzle flip, but it's already a louder gun anyway because of the the 10 inch barrel. Uh, so when you throw a muzzle brake on there, I mean it's just, maybe not for the shooter themselves, but anybody around you, they're gonna feel this thing go off. Um, 
I also threw on a key mod rail section. What I'd like to do is, there we go, go ahead and put my, my X300 on there. I feel like that's a really nice low profile light for the weapon itself. I can go ahead and do my, uh, my thumb break as well as, you know, employ the, the weapon light if needed. One thing I really like about the PWS is this adjustable gas block right here. So it actually comes with about four, I think it's about four settings based on the type of ammo and the configuration that you're running. So if you're running just regular loads without a suppressor, you would just keep it on the big zero. But as you need more adjustment to the way that the gas flows and sends the piston back, you can actually adjust this. So there's one for hotter loads, there's one for suppressed regular loads and suppressed hotter loads as well. So you have a lot of options here and I just think that's phenomenal. Um, that really lets you configure the way that you're shooting. I think it, it means that you can ensure this gun's going to be cycling the way that it should, regardless of your configuration. One thing I also like about the PWS is that it's chambered in 223 Wild. So normally I'm a big fan of 556. It's a little more hardy. It allows me to, you know, shoot both a 223 or a 556. But the 223 Wild was specifically designed. I mean, it, it just eats anything you can throw at it. Go ahead and lock that in place. And that's what she's looking like right now. I am super excited about this gun. So let's talk logistics for just a minute. When it comes to short barrel rifles, obviously there's a lot of red tape. Now I am not trying to give legal advice here. I would definitely uh, advise you to seek out the laws in your area as well as the federal laws around class three items. Uh, when you go with a barrel shorter than 16 inches, or as we talked about before, 14 and a half, with a pin welded muzzle device, um, you have to fill out a Form 1 with the ATF, Al uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives, or BAT fee, um, indicating that you want to build a short barrel rifle. The lower is actually what's considered a rifle by the government. So you'll notice I actually went out, since I had just bought the upper, I went out and ordered a PWS lower. Now I assembled this using Palmetto State. They had a really cool deal on an STR lower build kit with some Magpul. Just cool looking. I've already put on the, the bad lever here. I'm excited about this, but I cannot join this to the rifle until I have that Form 1 back. So um, it's, it's a little bit like when you fill out the paperwork around a suppressor. Right, you have to fill out the form one instead of a form four. You uh, indicate, you know, the size, the the configuration. Basically, you pay your two hundred dollar tax stamp uh, to the government, and then you basically do the waiting game. And I think uh, right now it's about eight months. Um, I've put mine in a few months ago, so I'm I'm hoping to get that back fairly soon. So I'll keep you updated as that happens. But for right now, this has to sit in the closet legally. I cannot join this lower with that upper uh, without that tax stamp approved by the ATF. Uh, otherwise, it's it's a felony. I, I basically become a felon at that point. So I have to keep this totally separate. This is you know locked up in my safe. And in the meantime, I do want that rifle to be usable. So what I've done is I've built out a pistol lower. Um, this is just you know one of the Anderson lowers. If you guys are familiar with those, I think they make a good pro good quality product. It's a nice, inexpensive option. Uh, and then I've put on a pistol buffer tube. Basically what, what that means, guys, for, for those of you that are unfamiliar, if as long as you do not shoulder a pistol, then it's legal. The moment that I were to hold this as a configured AR pistol, but then put it against my shoulder, I'm in violation of the law. So you have to be very, like I said, you have to be very cautious about the laws. You have to know what's legal and what's not. Uh, and then proceed with caution to make sure that you're always on the right side of the law. So I recommend you know reading some of the forums, getting familiar with the laws. Um, but like I said, in the meantime, this is legal. This is what uh, how I'm going to run the gun. Uh, so I'll go ahead and take this as just an empty mag to give you a feel. So I would simply put this on. There we go. Now obviously I need to drop I need to drop my bolt back in. But um, that is a <laughs> that is a suppressed AR pistol lower um, because again I have the paperwork back now from my 
for my suppressor, so that's legal to have on there. Um, I would love to get your thoughts and your impressions regarding primary weapons. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please subscribe. I'm going to be continuing to push out new content. Feel free to share with your friends, um, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.